Now that we have established several powerful properties of the Riemann integral, we can tie it back to the axiomatic characterization that we saw way back in the very first module in the series on Riemann integration. So, recall that in the very first module we had considered a function of the form IAB of IABF that associates with a function. So, f from AB to R is a continuous function, continuous function and IAB of f is sort of a function defined on continuous functions that assigns a number, that assigns a number and this number satisfies these two properties that IAC of f plus IBC of f is equal to IAB of f where a is less than c less than b. This is one of the properties and the second property is that or rather this was the second property. So, the first property was that if m is less than or equal to f of x is less than or equal to capital M on this closed interval a b then small m b minus a less than or equal to integral not integral i a b of f is less than or equal to capital M into B minus A. Okay. Now, we have established, we have established, established that, that first of all, all continuous functions, all continuous functions on closed intervals, closed intervals are Riemann integrable. We have already established this. Then we have also established, we have established that the above two properties, the above two properties, properties that uniquely characterize, uniquely characterize, characterize IAB of F is satisfied, is satisfied by integral a to b of f. So, that means that this is the unique function, this is the unique function on continuous functions, continuous functions that satisfies, that satisfies the axiomatic characterization, the axiomatic characterization. So, this says, this says that the function IAB whose existence was up in the air is now no longer up in the air, it is on concrete. We have created the appropriate definitions that will make IAB exist and this existence is shown to be nothing but the Riemann integral that we have been studying. Now, this helps us a lot because the topic of this module is the fundamental theorem of calculus, we have already done the hard work. So, I can state the fundamental theorem of calculus, I can state the fundamental theorem of calculus now, theorem of calculus. If f from a b to r is a Riemann integrable or is continuous, I got ahead of myself. I have the version I was about to state is going to be left to you in the exercises. If f from a, b to r is continuous, then, then g of x equal to integral a to x f is a differentiable function, is a differentiable function, function on closed interval a, b and g prime of x is nothing but f of x for all x in closed interval a b. This follows immediately because we have already proved this that any i a b that satisfies that satisfies these two conditions, these two conditions is automatically going to satisfy the conclusion of the fundamental theorem of calculus. We have already seen that. So, this bit is done with zero effort. Furthermore, 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 if g is any function, 
any function on closed interval a b such that g prime of x is equal to f of x then integral a to b f of f is nothing but g of b minus g of a okay so what this says is integration is the opposite is the opposite of differentiation so if you start with a continuous function take any anti derivative that is a function g such that g prime of x equal to f of x then integrating a to b f is reduced to finding the function g and then just substituting the limits to get g of b minus g of a okay so because we have that integration and differentiation are opposites several useful things like integration by substitution etc can be justified now you have never formally seen a justification of these facts but we can do them now so let's see let's call these applications applications oh by the way i should remark the way I, the way i have stated the fundamental theorem of calculus i have stated it only for continuous functions even though you can say a lot more which is there as part of the exercises since the crux the idea of the proof is there already in the axiomatic characterization and all you have to do is adapt the proofs and modify it a little bit i am just stating it in this case in any scenario this is the most important version of the fundamental theorem of calculus so i am leaving it here okay so in the exercises please look at modified statements of the fundamental theorem of calculus which applies to riemann integrable functions not just continuous functions before we begin with the first application let me just give a definition let me just give a definition if a is greater than b then we define we define integral a to b f to b minus integral b to a f this is the usual definition so exercise which is not that such a difficult exercise see which properties which properties so let me just put de by definition equal to see which properties or rather identities of riemann integral continue to be valid continue to be valid with this with this more general definition with this more general definition with this definition out of the way let's see some applications so application 1 application 1 this application is also called the change of variables change of variables so this states the following let a comma b and c comma d with a less than b c less than d be closed intervals be closed intervals and let let f from a b to c d b a continuously differentiable function recall this just means that the function is differentiable and the derivative f prime is continuous let f from c d to r b continuous b continuous not f g we have already used the letter f let g from c d to r be continuous now the question that this change of variables seeks to answer is integral f of a to f of b g what is this going to be note there is no necessity for f of a to be less than f of b it could be the case that f of b is actually less than f of a that's why i had to make the definition that i just made before i started with this application so integral f of a to f of b g as you all know is nothing but integral a to b g of f of x f prime of x 
okay okay so why is this true let's see a proof let's see a proof now let let capital g be an anti derivative anti derivative of g on cd okay such an anti derivative exists because the function g is given to be continuous then notice that notice that notice that g composed with this f g composed with f will be will be an anti derivative anti derivative for the function for the function g of f of x f prime of x this is just chain rule because g composed with f prime is just uh, g prime of f of x times f prime of x and g prime of f of x is nothing but g of f of x into f prime x right so g composed with f is an anti derivative for g of f of x f prime of x what this says is integral a to b f composed with g of x g prime of uh, sorry i <laughs> completely reversed the thing uh, sorry about that g of f of x f prime x integral a to b of this is nothing but g of f of b minus g of f of a okay so this is just an application application of the fundamental theorem of calculus this is just an application of the fundamental theorem of calculus please look back in the original modules on the axiomatic characterization to see why this follows from the fundamental theorem of calculus immediately or better yet just sit down right now and prove it it's just going to take you 2 minutes so integral a to b g of f of x f prime of x is just g of f of b minus g of f of a which is nothing but integral f of a to f of b f of a to f of b of uh, g of x just g why is this the case well again by fundamental theorem of calculus Uh, so, uh, by fundamental theorem of calculus, because integral of g f of a to f of b will be just capital G f of b minus G f of a, and this is same as this. This is same as this. Okay, so this is the famous integration by substitution, change of variables. There are several names for this integration by substitution or change of variables, and the proof just follows immediately from the fundamental theorem of calculus. That's application one. Let's see application two. Application two. Application two is one of the most powerful methods of integration that you have no doubt extensively studied in high school. This is called integration by parts. Integration by parts. What does integration by parts say? Let f comma g from a b to r be continuously differentiable. So take two functions f comma g on the interval a b that are continuously differentiable. What you are interested in is integrating f g prime from a to b. Okay, as we all know, the answer to this. is nothing but nothing but f of b f of uh, g of a uh, b minus f of a g of a minus integral a to b you just reverse the derivatives that is it becomes g f prime okay you are all familiar with this integral a to b f g prime is f b g b minus f a g a minus integral a to b g f prime if you are look, looking at this and thinking that it's different from what you saw in high school the only reason is because in high school you would have seen it in this form integral f g is f f g uh, sorry integral f g prime is f g minus uh, g prime f 
you would have seen it in this form or integral u dv is u v minus integral v du. Okay. Now these are just these are just antiderivatives. These are the antiderivative form. The antiderivative form where I'm treating integral of f as meaning taking antiderivative. As meaning to take antiderivative. That's the only reason why this this form might look the form that I have stated integral a b f g prime is f of b g of b minus f a g a minus integral a to b g f prime that might look uh, slightly different. Well, how does this follow? The proof is very easy. Just up it just applies the famous Leibniz rule for differentiation of product. We already know that in f g prime is f prime g plus f g prime. We already know this. So integral a to b f g prime is going to be integral f prime g a to b plus integral a to b f g prime. Okay, from which it follows, from which the result is obvious. The result is obvious. Okay, so two famous theorems that you have used left and right in your high school and probably in your undergraduate studies to evaluate integrals that is integration by substitution and integration by parts can both be easily justified as simple consequences of the fundamental theorem of calculus. So let me end with making some remarks. There will be some reference in the notes. Note that one of the consequences of the fundamental theorem of calculus is that every continuous function has an antiderivative. But if you just talk about elementary functions, which we are going to define very soon, elementary functions, these are functions made out of, I will put this in quotes, made out of polynomials, trigonometric functions, exponentials, logarithms, quotients. If you just look at a function that is made out of this, by made out of I just mean by adding, multiplying, subtracting, composing, so on and so forth. If you just look at these functions, if you like, these are called elementary functions. Uh, I will not give a rigorous definition. I will leave it to you to check the reference in the notes. If you just look at elementary functions, suppose, suppose such a function is continuous is continuous on the closed interval a b then there is no guarantee that its antiderivative is also going to be an elementary function we know that there is an abstract antiderivative that comes for free from the fundamental theorem of calculus but it could get really complicated it might not be an elementary function at all so don't make the mistake of thinking that just because you are given an expression that it will be easy to find what the antiderivative is that's not the case no doubt you are you still have nightmares of very complicated substitutions that have that seem to be pulled out of a magic hat to make the integral work that is really needed simply because there is no algorithm to integrate in any easy manner please check the references if this is interesting to you this is a course on real analysis and you have just watched the module on the fundamental theorem of calculus